Somerset Circle was going under. The neighborhood was falling apart because of crime. It was such a horror story. The crime here had been so bad. Somerset Circle was dominating the news all the time. There, was, there were stories going on there. It was so scary, we found out that people couldn't get pizza delivered here. It, there were had hypodermic needles all over the street, broken glass. Parents, when we were talking to them, they said, we'd love to have a, a place where we could look out of our window from our unit and see our kids playing in a safe place. Well, that wasn't possible. So we bought the first two buildings, we were townhouses, three unit townhouses, and we uh, started working on, on those buildings. For a starter, six units, great. I remember the night that we uh, had the, uh, the mortgage closing, we went out, three of us, uh, Bill Arnold, Troy Main, and myself, our attorney, and uh, we had a, a celebratory drink, and then we, uh, before we were done, we said, ooh, now we gotta do something. We were in the middle of being lifetime renters and playing the renting game and trying to find a good rental. And Our last current house, it was gorgeous. I loved it. And we moved out of that location because the landlord said, well, we're going to raise the rent up to X amount of dollars, $83 more. I'm like, whoa, OK. And we didn't feel comfortable of, that, of the amount they were raising up. And we're like, well, we're just going to have to relocate then. We couldn't find nothing, absolutely nothing at that time. And so we ended up moving in with my mom temporarily into the basement. A family of five living in the basement, things was, you know, on a tight squeeze. One of the lessons that we've learned over time that, or the outcomes that we've seen over time is that people who become homeowners tend to vote tend to understand the issues in their community better, are uh, engaged in those, on those issues, as opposed to a transient who's moving from place to place and having to deal with all that. They begin to, to uh, buy things for their homes and their families because they no longer are paying more than 50% of their income for housing. Habitat's formula caps that. I was at work and I got the phone call and said, hey, your application uh, was approved for Habitat. And I'm looking like, my what? And it's like, wow, I'm in shock. Wow, this is happening. We're gonna, get, we're gonna get this. We're gonna get a home. And she's like, you don't seem too happy. I'm like, oh, trust me, I'm happy. It's just, <laughs> I'm at work. <laughs> well, it's freedom. It's, it's freedom because for years and years and years, we, we were renters. Are they gonna raise the rent? But now we have a home. It taught our kids to have patience. No matter where you go, you're still family, you know, even though it might hurt you, even though, you know, things might not be the way you want it to be. And our children, for the first time, have their own bedrooms. Yes. And their own toys and their own room. And we didn't get a house for free. We put a lot of work into that house and they could see that when we came home and we're covered with who knows what, making it a home for us and our children. We have rented for 10 years or 20 years almost, and we moved from place to place. So it's really hard to build memories when you're always constantly on the move. When you want space, there's not that space for you to have seven kids and then the three adults in like a three bedroom apartment. We didn't have a table to eat at. That was one of the big things. And it was pretty crowded when we had family over. There was no place to sit at all. Everybody was standing. There were so many people in the house that I wasn't able to study at home at all. Oftentimes we hear from the family's testimonies and they say, well, you know, the thing that I really love about having uh, my own bedroom so I've got a place where I can go that's quiet, where I can study. Whoa, yeah, when I was sharing my bedroom with my siblings or my parents, I didn't have a place like that. Being in a larger space and having um, our, my own room to focus on my work really benefited me. I wanted to go to college, but I wasn't so sure, and I graduated. I didn't think I was ever gonna graduate from the university. And I was the first one in my family, and I was the first generation. 
have to have changed lives. If it wasn't for them, we would still be living in an apartment, paying rent. I'm so thankful for them. People had left this part of town. One of the units was so damaged by repeated fires that it was condemned. So we had salvaged what we could out of the building and then hired a bulldozer to push it into the basement and then seal it. Today it's the site of a playground and large green space that's used by the kids fulfilling the parents' request to have green space. We, we muzzled through this. We, it, it took us longer than we expected, but we eventually moved our habitat offices into one of the units uh, that were here. That helps uh, keep everything on track and, and work well. We turned Eric Circle into a parking lot instead of into a turnaround for drug sellers. We built a playground for families to watch their kids and have a great time as a family. The community really started to thrive, but we really knew that things had really kind of turned around here when they started delivering pizza. That was, you know, the marketplace saying, yeah, you guys, you did it right. It's a thriving community that stabilized this part of, of Madison and it helped stabilize and put Habitat for Humanity on the map.